Hello, welcome to the first video uh, corresponding with the Fly to Learn curriculum for Explain. In lesson one, we will be covering flight conditions and setup for new pilots, aircraft instruments, taking off, adjusting your view mid flight, and the trade off between airspeed and altitude. As you gain experience in X plane, you can try out all sorts of different aircraft and airports that increase in difficulty. To start, we have a checklist for new pilots with easy conditions. Throughout the presentation, you'll see this reminder of the quick flight setup that we're going to walk through in detail together now. To get to this window, you'll select File, Quick Flight Setup. Find the Seattle Tacoma International Airport by typing KSEA into the airport search bar. To select your aircraft, the Cessna 172SP, double click on General Aviation. For time of day and weather, choose uh, day and clear. If, once we start flying, you have a hard time seeing the white navigation box that allows you to control the plane, you can select a few clouds from Quick Flight Setup. This will make it a little bit easier to see the outline of the navigation box. When you're finished, click Fly with these options in the bottom right corner of your screen. But before you do, make sure you click this checkbox. Show this window on every startup of X-Plane. We will go through this quick flight setup together in just a moment when we practice taking off. First, let's take a look at the instruments on your instrument panel. These will be on the bottom half of your screen the majority of the time that you're flying. The first instrument we want to point out is the airspeed indicator. This indicates how fast the airplane is moving relative to the surrounding air. In a future lesson, we will discuss the difference between your indicated airspeed and your true airspeed. The attitude indicator shows the attitude of the airplane relative to the horizon. As you tip the nose of your aircraft up, this instrument will read more blue, and as you tip down, more brown. Your altimeter shows how high your airplane is above sea level. The large hand represents hundreds, and the small hand represents thousands. Your coordinated turn indicator indicates the rate and direction of turn as you fly. And the heading indicator shows the heading of the airplane compared to geographical north. Lastly, the vertical speed indicator reports the rate that the aircraft is climbing or descending. At the top of your instrument panel, you'll see a compass which reports the heading of the airplane relative to magnetic north. And towards the bottom of your instrument panel, you'll see the tachometer, which shows the number of times the engine turns per minute. We'll be learning more about these instruments in detail as we work through the lessons. If you need a reminder about what these instruments do, you can turn on Show Instrument we will walk through this in just a moment. Let's go ahead and open up X-Plane. With X-Plane on, let's first demonstrate turning on this helpful instrument reminder. Click on About, and then Instructions, and select Show Instrument Instructions in the cockpit. This will give you a reminder anytime you need to remember the name of an instrument or what it does. Ready to learn to take off? Start by ensuring that you have the correct aircraft and airport. Select File, Quick Flight Setup, type KSEA into the airport search bar, 
to select the Seattle Tacoma International Airport. Make sure you have the Cessna 172SP aircraft selected and select day and clear. Let's fly with these options. Click P to pause the simulator. Press B on your keyboard or click on this brake light to turn the brakes of your aircraft off. Use the down arrow key on your keyboard to reveal the throttle. We are going to push this in all the way to turn our throttle to full power. You can also use the mouse wheel or the F2 key, but only if you are unpaused. Go ahead and use our mouse to push that in all the way. And use the up arrow key to resume view. Click and a box will be revealed around these crosshairs. That's how you know you can control your plane. The plane is going to want to drift to the left naturally. So start with your mouse slightly to the right of these crosshairs. You can now press P to unpause and you can start taxiing down the runway. Keep an eye on your airspeed indicator and when you reach about 75 knots, slightly move your mouse down to take off. You're in the air! Press P to pause. To restart a flight, click File, Quick Flight Setup, and simply again select Fly with these options. Go ahead and practice taking off until you successfully take off at least three times. Next, let's talk about flight views. X-Plane offers different angles for you to observe your flight. Once you get into a successful level flight, go ahead and click P to pause. Let's demonstrate the different views you have around the plane. If you click E, your camera starts to move around the plane with an orange triangle showing which view you're in. Q will rotate the other direction, and W will bring you back to your original pilot's view. Clicking Shift-8 on your keyboard allows you to see from behind your plane. If you want to fly in this mode, make sure you click again to reveal that control box. Go ahead and try out flying with some different views. One reason the Wright brothers were so successful is that they understood the real challenges in flight were in controlling the plane and keeping it stable. They described flight in three axes and the corresponding motions as roll, pitch, and yaw. Rolling describes the rotation of the wings along the longitudinal axis, nose to tail on the aircraft. This is a similar rotation to twisting a doorknob. The control surfaces on the plane that control roll are ailerons, and they do this by increasing lift on one side of the plane and decreasing on the other. Unfortunately, this also causes something called adverse yaw which is when the nose of the airplane turns in the opposite direction of the roll or bank. We use the rudder to counteract adverse yaw and point the nose in the same direction as the bank. 
We'll take a look at this on a plane in just a minute. Pitch describes the plane's nose moving up and down. You can think about it like a boat pitching on the ocean. This kind of rotation is similar to the rotation of someone doing a somersault. The elevator, the part of the horizontal tail section that moves up or down, controls the pitch of the airplane. Pitch also impacts something called the angle of attack of the wing, which is important for lift. We will be discussing angle of attack in a future lesson. Yaw describes the plane rotating left or right. This is similar to the rotation of a ballerina spinning. The rudder, the part of the vertical tail section that moves left or right, controls yaw. The rudder also prevents adverse yaw, as we mentioned before. And we're going to be seeing adverse yaw again in just a minute. Let's go ahead and see how these different control surfaces move on the plane. Be sure and answer the investigative questions in your student handbook with what you discover. First, ensure that your quick flight setup is ready to go. That is that your airport is at KSEA. You have the Cessna 172SP flying during the day with clear weather. Select Shift 8 to see the back of your aircraft. You can right click to rotate your view, click on the screen to get the control box, and then press P to unpause. Make sure that your brakes are still on. Try moving your cursor up and down. Write down what you see. Now try moving your mouse to the left and to the right. Note not just the ailerons on the wings, but also the rudder on the tail. Be sure and answer the investigative questions in your student handbook with what you discover. Last thing we'll be covering in lesson one is on kinetic and potential energy. As a pilot, you need to be concerned about energy management. Your airplane runs on fuel, and this fuel has a great deal of potential energy. Once you start the plane, the engine converts that potential energy in the fuel into moving or kinetic energy, which is seen by the propeller turning in the air. As you add more fuel, by pushing in the throttle further, you can see that kinetic energy in your tachometer increasing. The plane, pulled by the propeller, will move faster down the runway and lift off. If you apply full throttle, the plane is going to do one of two things, go faster or go higher. If you decide to go faster, the plane is converting the fuel, or potential energy, into kinetic energy or speed. If you decide to go higher, the plane is converting the fuel or potential energy into altitude or a different form of potential energy. It's the same thing as when you pedal your bike down a hill. At the top of the hill, you have more potential energy from gravity. And as you ride down that hill, you're converting that gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy via speed. It is important to note that not all potential energy becomes kinetic. For example, some of that potential energy is going to become heat and will not contribute towards speed. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what we've been discussing. Navigate to quick flight setup. We are in the Seattle Tacoma Airport with the Cessna flying during the day with clear weather. However, this time we want to start in the air. So select the location menu and select global airport. We want to approach from three nautical miles.
we're starting up in the air and what we're going to be investigating is how flying with our nose pointed down or flying with our nose pointed up affects our speed, our attitude, and our altitude. So go ahead and start by jotting down what these three instruments look like during level flight. Note you don't have to be concerned about the actual values, just generally how the arrows are arranged or the instruments look. Next, we're going to fly with the nose pointed down for three seconds. Note that pointing the nose down involves moving the mouse cursor above our crosshairs. Jot down what our three instruments look like. Next, bring your plane back into level flight. And then fly with your nose pointed up for three seconds. Now take a look at the airspeed indicator the altimeter, and the attitude indicator. Be sure and answer the investigative questions in your student handbook.